Hello, hello. Linda White here, and this is Shakuri's Time Capsule, a short podcast where I reminisce over fashion, food, fads, and TV from past decades. As we're now in February, which is traditionally Black History Month, I thought I would dedicate this episode to classic African-American TV comedies, which were a huge part of my youth. The earliest one I remember was a show called Julia, starring Diane Carroll. This show, which premiered in 1968 and lasted three seasons, was the first sitcom to star a black woman in a non-stereotypical role, unlike earlier shows like Beulah or Amos and Andy. In Julia, the main character was a widowed nurse whose husband had died in the Vietnam War. She had a young son named Corey, and they lived next door to a white family named the Wagondorns. What's weird is that when this first aired, I was four at the time, and I don't recall even being aware the main characters are black. To me, this is just a story of a single mom raising her little boy. The 1970s saw the birth of many classic black sitcoms. Let's start with the biggest one that had what's arguably the best theme song of all time, The Jeffersons. Now, I don't care what kind of mood you might be in. As soon as you hear those first few bars of the Jefferson intro, you can't help but to start feeling better. The Jeffersons was a spinoff of another iconic TV show, All in the Family, with Sherman Hemsley, Isabel Sanford, and Mike Evans all reprising their roles. Although the main focus of the show was on the Jefferson family and their rise from their working-class neighborhood in Queens to a deluxe high-rise in Manhattan thanks to George Jefferson's successful dry-cleaning business, the main scene-stealer to me was Florence, their wise-cracking maid. Any episode featuring Florence always promised some comedy gold. Ironically, one of the lead singers of the Jefferson's theme song, just happened to star in another iconic black comedy of the 1970s. I'm talking about Janae Dubois, who played the sassy, nosy neighbor Wilona Woods in Good Times. Now, Good Times is actually a member of that All in the Family dynasty. It was a spinoff of Maude, which was a spinoff of All in the Family. So Good Times was actually a spinoff of a spinoff. It was set in Chicago and focused on the Evans family. John Amos played the father, James Evans, and Esther Roll reprised her character, Florida Evans, who she previously portrayed in Maud. They had three teenagers. The eldest, James Evans Jr., or J.J., was the breakaway star of the show. His catchphrase, Dynamite, became part of everyday American vocabulary back then. J.J.'s popularity eventually irritated both John Amos and Esther Roll, both of whom had stated publicly in interviews that they felt the J.J. character's stereotypical buffoonish behavior was not in keeping with the more realistic image they wanted the show to project. Eventually, they both left the show. There were several other sitcoms of the 70s, I remember, featuring African-American families, like That's My Mama and What's Happening?, I'll also throw in Sanford and Son in that mix, as it depicted a widowed father and his son operating their junkyard business from their home. I have this entire series on DVD, and I love watching it to this day, especially any episode featuring the purse-swinging, Bible-thumping Aunt Esther. Both LaWanda Page, who played Aunt Esther, and Red Fox, who played Fred Sanford, they were childhood friends who grew up in St. Louis and they eventually worked the club circuit together before relocating to California. When Red Fox was offered the Sanford and Son sitcom, he made sure to bring his old friend LaWanda Page to the attention of the producers, who had her audition for the Ann Esther role. The rest is TV history. There were a few years when things were kind of quiet on the black TV comedy scene until September of 1984, when one of America's biggest sitcoms at that time made its debut and brought family-friendly TV back to the forefront, making NBC a television juggernaut on Thursday nights. I'm talking about The Cosby Show. 
All right. I know Bill Cosby is a very controversial figure these days who's been convicted of some very serious crimes. But quite ironically, back in the early 80s, he was nicknamed America's dad for his promotion of family values, as well as being a proponent of higher education. Uh, This is a case where I have to separate the man from his body of work. And despite what he's currently serving jail time for, we can't dispute the fact that Bill Cosby did in fact help change the face of primetime TV in the mid-80s. After years of more adult-type comedy fare laced with double entendres like Three's Company and Soap, The Cosby Show, along with Family Ties, another NBC sitcom, brought the family sitcom back to the forefront. And unlike a lot of previous black comedies of the 70s, The Cosby Show featured a family headed by both a mom and a dad who were professionals. In this case, a doctor and a lawyer. There were no stereotypes in this show. Okay, the plots were a bit corny at times, but overall, this show was a refreshing change over what the networks had been offering up until then. Another favorite program of mine around that time was a Cosby show spinoff, A Different World. This show, which was set in Hillman, a fictitious black college, was initially supposed to be a vehicle for Lisa Bonet, who played daughter Denise Huxtable on The Cosby Show. But when she became pregnant during the first season, the decision was made to write her out and continue the show without her. And with no offense meant to Ms. Bonet, I think A Different World actually flourished once she was gone and that show took a different direction with Debbie Allen in the producer-director seat. Jasmine Guy, who played the spoiled Whitley Gilbert with comedic brilliance, took over the lead female role, while Kadeem Hardison, alias Dwayne Wayne, eventually became her on-screen love interest, and A Different World would go on to run six seasons. The late 80s and 1990s gave us even more African-American sitcoms like Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Sister Sister, Family Matters, and Martin, just to name a few. And today, I gotta say, my favorite African-American sitcom has got to be Blackish which not only gives us a lot to laugh at, but also a lot of issues and historical context to really think about. So those are just a few of my favorite black sitcoms that I grew up with. What were yours? I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a line at shakuri2, that's C-H-A-K-K-U-R-I and the number two at gmail.com. Or you can follow this podcast Instagram account. It's Shakuri's Time Capsule, all one word on Instagram. Looking for something to read? Check out my two historical fiction novels that are currently available on Amazon, Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Bell of Camden County, both written by me, Linda M. White, are set in the Old South during the late 1800s and early 1900s. They both deal with the topic of racial identity. As always, I thank you very, very much for listening. Do take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. Until next time, adios.